What's going on? So I was sitting here thinking that it's been a while since I did a project at my house. I guess I've been running out of ideas. So I happened to mention that to my wife, which was a bad idea. And she was like, oh, I got tons of ideas you can do. So she came up with one. It's not a huge project, project but it's been something that she's been thinking about for a while. Um, so I guess I'm going to go ahead and work on that one. Um, but I guess before I do any project, as you all know, I always have to go to one place first. No. Brought you some coffee, bub. Did you really? No, that's hot chocolate, bro. That's yours. Trade me. That's hot chocolate. So you can probably guess why I'm here. Mm. Yeah, you want some free material? <laughs> yes, I do. Man, this place beats Lowe's any day of the week. I mean, I'm a Jamie pro, I think. I think that's what they call it. I got premier parking even. Thanks, J-Mo. We're in front of our new project. So let's talk about the outside of the shed. As you can see, a lot of this uh, material is falling apart. It definitely needs a paint job. It just doesn't look good. So we're gonna get that lap siding that we took from Jamie's and we're gonna redo uh, the outside with some lap siding, get it caulked up and painted. Doors uh, are probably interior doors. They're not exterior rated doors. And as you can see, they're starting to fall apart, man. So we're gonna go ahead and replace the doors there. Also our ramp, uh, our ramp is falling apart and deteriorating there. Uh, going into the shed, you can see it's just, it's just a mess. Uh, all of our tools here, the lawn tools are just kind of laying there. We're gonna get that all squared away and looking better. Uh, the shelf, as you can see, is about to fall down. Uh, it's just totally trash. So we're gonna get that replaced, kind of utilize this pegboard over here and get some stuff hung up and get it off the floor and just kind of make it look nice. So I thought I would tackle the doors first because I thought they were gonna be the biggest pain. I didn't pull any measurements of the opening because I don't really care what that is. What I'm concerned with is that the new doors are the same size as the old doors. So what I'll do is I'll just take measurements of the old ones and I'll cut the new doors down to be the same size. And again, those measure right about 77 and just shy of 30. These are a good 30 strong. So I think what I need to do is I think I'm going to rip a little bit off this edge. Now, I don't need these doorknobs or this part. So I'm going to rip them off this end. I'm going to put doorknobs on them, but then I'll just put like a latch system to keep them closed. So I need to rip about three inches off the length. So I'll probably take it off the bottom, three inches here. And then I just need to chisel out a little bit here because uh, there's square hinges on there. I just need to figure out and put a hinge on there and then I can hang them and then I'll paint them uh, in place. All right, well, it's, uh, what's, what is today? I don't even know what today is. I think it's Wednesday. It's Wednesday. Uh, I got the doors out here. We got them cut down. And the only thing is now is that I need to dry fit them in place to mark where the hinges are going to go. And the old hinges, he only had two of them, again, because they're only holding those light interior doors. But these are these thick panel doors. So I'm going to need to add another uh, bracket in there, another hinge in there. So I'm going to run to my uh, local hardware store, Oxford's, and pick up another two more hinges then I'll get back, we'll dry fit those, get the hinges marked, get them cut out where they need to be, and then we'll get these doors hung. All right, well, I had to shut the time lapse off because I was about to start throwing things. As you can see with a bunch of shavings and the buzz saw and the grinder and some Lexel, <laughs> I finally got them hung. And the problem was is that A, I hate putting in doors and B, I hate putting in things into somebody else's mess. Like he already, the jams weren't straight, the hinges weren't cut in right. So nothing would close the right way. But I think I got it done, I got this, other piece of wood in here and I got some hinges too. So this goes in like that, that locks. 
this goes down here and that locks. And then now when I shut the door, same height, everything matches. So what I'll do is I'll put the knobs on and I'm just gonna put a latch here that I can put and lock if I need to. Everything in this shed and in this house is all Phillips. I don't own anything Phillips, we use all T25s. So I had to try to find some type of Phillips in the shed and I found this little bit holder and then this bit. But the problem is, is that the bit keeps going out. So this is my third bit. I lost two down there already. So I think this would be a perfect spot. I will just process some pallet wood, take some of those slats and use that for the shelving. That way I don't have to buy any material. So the pallet wood that I had, um, it would have been great, but A, I would have taken it apart, which is a pain. B, I don't have anything that's long enough to go all the way across. I would have had to have broke it in the middle there and that would have taken away some of the sturdibility. So um, I found some old boards here that I got from Jamie. I don't even know what they are, but they're just back here uh, behind the shed there. I got a few more of them back there. So I'm just gonna use these cause I can use a full length. I got the brackets back up. I'm just gonna go ahead and put a few pieces of those on there and uh, we'll call that a day. Take a look at this. Remember what all these tools looked like just piled up there in the corner. Get a couple old pallets, screw them to the wall and then you got a great holder for all your tools. Let's talk about our material here we got here. This is our LP Smart Side, and we use this for soffit. And it measures 16 inches. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna rip it right in half. I also have some of this vented soffit, but again, I'm just gonna rip it down at eight cut that vented stuff off and the juice use the opposite side. So I'm gonna go ahead and rip this down and that's it for today. And then tomorrow, hopefully I will get all of it sided and then Friday I will paint it. I already found some mischief. Hmm, what do we have here? What? Good thing the kids didn't know those were there. Okay, so you can see how this here, how that sticks out farther than that does. And I'm gonna just end up putting the LP right over the front of this. I know it's probably not ideal. What I need to do is I'm probably gonna fur that out a little bit. Fur, fur it out a little bit. And then across the bottom there. And then I'll put one piece of LP kind of horseshoed up around there. And I'll put my ledger board in there for the ramp. And then I'll just start my LP smart side up there. Cock it and paint it and call it a day. Good morning. It is now Thursday, day three on the shed. And uh, I got all my material ripped down. And um, first thing I'm going to do this morning is I'm going to take some of my uh, big stretch here. I'm going to take my big stretch and I'm going to kind of caulk all the way around this and get all that caulked up real nice and then uh i'll go ahead and get started i'm gonna probably caulk some stuff in here is there anything that i want to kind of seal up before i start putting in the siding uh that way i don't run into any problems after the fact try to just keep it dried up as much as possible so i've been working on this bottom part here for a while and i didn't time lapse it just because it was going super slow and i wasn't sure exactly what i was going to do but like i said uh that bottom band was way in from the actual logs um, so I had to kind of fur it out. So I used some of this LP one inch and I furred that all out across the bottom. And then what I did is I actually made this my ledger board as well. So I'll use this as the ledger board for my, um, ramp. And I'll just kind of back bevel that a little bit. So it sits up there a little bit closer. Uh, and I'll go there. So, and I've been contemplating again, I was going to do horizontal lap siding on this thing, but I think because of the way. These are rounded and nothing's gonna lay in there flat. And some of the spots here, you'll see where the corner board sticks out a little bit and some over here, it sticks out a lot of bit. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to switch it to board on board vertical siding. So I'm just going to do something like this where there's a little overlap on each side, long vertical strip, horizontal and vertical I don't know whatever that is vertical strips I guess
voila all right there's one side um i think it looks pretty good i am taking it video from a little bit farther back just so that you don't see my cock job but um i got it cocked up across the scene there i got that piece i put in cocked in and then i cocked down the sides i was gonna put a little piece of trim in there but it just it looked too not good so i think that's it <laughs> I gotta do this side. Now these pieces here on the back sides, I don't have anything long enough, so I am gonna have to piece it, but whatever, I'll just caulk it. It's underneath here, so no one's gonna see it anyways. So, But I think that looks pretty cool, man. It looks a lot better once it's all painted the same color and, uh, and looking good, it'll be awesome. On the back two sides, my boards are not long enough. So I talked to Arlo and he said the best thing to do would be to put a 45 in the joints. You can just maybe throw a little bit of caulk on it and some paint, but that way when the water runs down the top, it'll flow down and it won't get back behind the siding or get into your joint. So I have all this extra material out here and it's all just random length. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take them and I'm gonna cut them as bottom pieces, cut the 45s on them, put all those up and then go back and measure the top pieces I need, put the 45s on them, cut those and put those up. finish up this i got uh, you can see i got my joints on the bottom all cocked up my joints across there all cocked up and I don't, you can't tell in the time lapse but i didn't realize that this is on an angle because i didn't do the front really because of the door i didn't realize and didn't kind of pay attention that this was on an angle so when i cut all of these boards when i went to put them up i didn't put angles on any of them and i was really short on material so i was like you know what i just left it and i just put this little piece of trim up there back side here uh back in the bushes i just noticed something as you can see that these bottom ones whatever the log things are not the same as the top ones isn't that grand and as you can see that these stick out way farther than those do <laughs> so there's a big huge gap there so what i did is i took some of this uh trim material i have and i ripped down some pieces so i'm going to put this like that and that's gonna fur out where the pieces go so what i'll have to do is i'll just have to cut my siding put this where it goes nail that up and then nail the siding to that So the next task was the ramp. I ripped the old ramp out and then I went and got the material that I stole. I mean, I borrowed from the job site to see how it was gonna lay out. It actually lays out pretty well. It's about 11 boards, I think, uh, with the last one being a little bit of a rip. So um, I could actually start on the outsides and work my way in and just rip the middle board down a little bit. Now it's my favorite time of the makeover. Yep, you guessed it, painting. Last day on the shed remodel. Got a few little things to finish up. Gonna hang my flag back up. Got to install some door handles there on the doors. Do a little bit of tidying up and she'll be all finished. I appreciate you hanging out with me and I'll see you on the next project.